On this episode of How to Make Dinner, I'm making the coziest thing ever, shepherd's pie. So here's the thing about shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie is supposed to be made with lamb because shepherds work with sheep. But nowadays you see a lot of shepherd's pie that's made with turkey or beef or uh, lentils or really all kinds of things. I guess technically a beef version of shepherd's pie is supposed to be called cottage pie. It's kind of the same no matter which protein you use. So you can do this exact same recipe with lamb, beef, chicken, turkey, lentils, veggie ground round, you know, I don't think that's the thing anymore. It's beyond meat now. So beyond meat, I intended to use lamb today, but uh, my store didn't have any lamb. So I'm going with ground chicken thighs. They happen to be on sale as well. I'm choosing thighs rather than ground chicken breast because ground chicken breast, I think would just be a bit too lean. And I do want a bit of fat and flavor, of course. In this so I'm gonna make it the exact same way I would if I was using lamb or beyond beef or whatever the other cool thing about this shepherd's pie is I'm making the whole thing in a cast iron skillet which I think is just really convenient you can cook all your meat in it and then you can put your potatoes on top and then bake the whole thing in the oven and serve it out of that as well so I'm gonna get this thing pretty hot because I want to brown the meat if you've seen this show before and you've seen me use this induction burner, you know that this sucker gets real hot. <laughs> so I'm going to be very careful. So I've got a little bit of oil there, any kind of oil. I happen to be using olive oil and I'm just going to heat that up until it starts shimmering. And I find the fastest way to brown meat is to kind of spread it out as much as you can in one kind of single layer. While the chicken thighs are browning as much as possible, I'm gonna start prepping some veg. So I have one large onion and two carrots and three cloves of garlic. And I actually like these when they're done pretty finely. Sometimes I even pull out my food processor so that I can just kind of grind them into oblivion. But I've got a few minutes right now, so I'm just gonna, just gonna chop them by hand. My veggies are all chopped. I have a feeling that this turkey pancake is getting really brown on the bottom. You can see how much steam slash smoke it's creating. Oh yeah, perfect. So whenever you're cooking meat, at first there's always a bunch of water and you'll see that water and you'll hear it kind of like steaming, boiling, bubbling away. And then there will be a point when it starts to turn into more of like a fat sizzling sound. And that's usually a good indication that you're starting to get some browning. Okay, so that's about as brown as my patients will allow this turkey to get. And so I'm gonna add the veggies to it now. Uh, all the onions, all the carrots, everything goes in. Garlic too. The browning is a nice to have and it definitely adds a depth of flavor, but we're gonna add a lot of other flavorful things to this too, so I'm not too concerned. I am a little concerned that this pan is not big enough for the shepherd's pie, but no turning back now. Okay. At this point, I want the veggies to cook. So I'm gonna pop a lid on and just let everything kind of cook together. Let the veggies cook down a bit. And I'm gonna prep my potatoes. The same way that you can use any protein as the kind of base of your shepherd's pie, you can also use any mashed topping that you like. I'm going with the classic potato, but one thing that I do like to do, and I do this at Thanksgiving too, is I like to mash one sweet potato or yam in with my regular potatoes. So it adds a nice sweetness, it adds a bit of moisture, 
and it's just kind of fun. So I'm doing that. So I'm using three potatoes and one small sweet potato, and these are russets. And I might not use it all, but I'm certainly not gonna complain about having leftover mashed potato in my fridge, especially because tomorrow morning is Sunday morning <laughs> and there's nothing like fried leftover mashed potato patties for breakfast or you know i could make gnocchi for dinner or i could make potato scones i actually did a whole series a couple years back on how to use up leftover mashed potatoes so if that interests you i'll uh, leave a link below i don't always peel potatoes but i am going to peel them for this because i'm having friends over tonight that are going to eat this shepherd's pie with me and I kind of feel like other people like peeled potatoes a lot of the time. And uh, especially for a mashed topping, it's just kind of nice to have it a little bit refined and not have like little bits of skin floating around. So, you know, do whatever suits you. My method of boiling potatoes is basically to cut them into large chunks not too small because i don't want them to get waterlogged i actually just do what my mom taught me to do which is cover them not all the way cover them like start to put cold water up the pot until you can see it through the potatoes so it's about halfway covering the potatoes and then slap the lid on bring it to a boil turn down the heat wait until they're cooked <laughs> that wasn't a very good explanation but that's what i'm gonna do Let's see how we're doing here. Because the pan is still ripping hot, I'm still getting some browning going on and I can feel some stickage on the bottom, which is not a bad thing at all because I'm about to introduce some liquid into this equation, which is gonna pull everything up. It's starting to smell good, even though there's not a lot in there. It's about to smell even better because I'm about to put a bunch of delicious things in there. Starting with a big kind of probably two to three tablespoons of tomato paste. I love keeping a tube of tomato paste. So handy. I've got some onion powder, which I know there's onion in the mix, but onion powder is just so concentrated. So I'm adding about a teaspoon of onion powder. And then we also have garlic in the mix, but I'm also adding garlic powder. Same, same amount, about a teaspoon. Mostly because it's just so damn good. <laughs> and give that a really, really, really good mix so that there's no flavorless bits. And you might notice that I haven't added any salt to this yet. And that's because I'm going to add a bit of soy sauce and I didn't want the mixture to become too salty. So I'm adding about three tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm also adding some HP sauce, which is something that I love. I don't use it very often. The main thing I use it on is sausages, but I don't eat sausages very often. So it kind of just sits in the back of my fridge door. I'm gonna add a splash of red wine. And I'm also gonna add some dried rosemary or dried thyme. I happen to have rosemary, so that's what's going in. And, you know, a decent sized pinch. If you had fresh, even better. Next up, I'm gonna add some stock. So if I had beef stock, I would use it, or, you know, a dark veggie stock or mushroom stock. But I've got chicken stock and that's fine by me. So that's what's going in. It's about a cup. It's kind of just enough to make things really nice and saucy. Maybe it's more like two cups. We're basically trying to build a gravy right into this mixture. You definitely don't want a dry shepherd's pie. Okay, I'm gonna give this a taste and make sure it's not too salty. That stock I used was salty, so we'll see. 
Mmm. It's perfect. It's delicious. My potatoes are cooked. I have some butter and some milk. I actually have soy milk in here because that's what I have uh, in this bowl and a bit of salt. I'm just going to use my potato ricer to mash these in. I actually don't have a potato masher at the moment, but the ricer is awesome. So I use that. And also I don't mash potatoes all that often, but it does a great job. This was one of those $5 secondhand store purchases and it was a great one it definitely reminds me of uh play-doh <laughs> there was that you remember those play-doh dolls where you would squeeze play-doh in them and like it would come out of their head or something like hair it's been a while since i've busted out the old play-doh all right put the play-doh tools away Oh, this is so nice. Just kind of fold the butter and milk through. And I did have a pinch of salt in here, but I'm just going to taste it and make sure it's salty enough. I kind of do like a little bit of a salty mashed potato. <laughs> I think I'm a bit of a salt tooth in general, especially when it comes to potato. It just, just needs it. Mmm, perfect. It's almost too easy. Now it's officially time to put the pie together. Here's my mixture. It looks delicious. It's been simmering away while the potatoes were cooking and it's juicy and it's flavorful, but it is missing a couple of things. One is Frozen peas. <laughs> you can't have shepherd's pie without frozen peas, in my humble opinion. So I've got a bunch here, probably about a cup. And I didn't add them earlier because I kind of just want to preserve as much green freshness as possible. And this is about to go in the oven for a while. The last thing is just a matter of preference. And that is a lot of people thicken their shepherd's pie gravy with flour to kind of help bind the juice and the meat and just make it all one cohesive thing. I'm not a fan of using flour for a few reasons. One, it's just an extra thing that I have to do. Two, if you overdo it at the beginning, there's kind of no turning back. You just have to keep adding liquid and then that messes with the balance of flavor and everything else. And three, I mean, half the time when people come over for dinner, one of them is gluten-free, at least one person. So why not just keep it gluten free? And so my hack for thickening up the gravy of shepherd's pie is to just wait till the end, see what you need, and then chuck in a little bit of your mashed potato. And then it kind of just magically does the trick. It just seems like a no brainer to me. So that's it, just a few kind of spoonfuls of mashed potato. And this is now such a nice consistency. So I'm going to make a nice even layer here. And because the mixture is so saucy, you kind of need to be gentle so you don't end up with pie all up the sides and mashed potato, you know, in a big pile in the middle. Kind of need to distribute it evenly from the beginning. Yeah, this is the perfect amount. I take it back about tomorrow's mashed potato breakfast. It's kind of a bummer actually. And then, I mean, this part you can get as creative as you want. I'm just gonna be pretty rustic about it because I want to get this thing in the oven. I'm gonna put this into a 425 degree oven for about 35 to 45 minutes. And when it's done, my friends are gonna be here and we're gonna be eating it. So I'm gonna say see you later. And thanks so much for joining me in this episode. I hope you liked my shepherd's pie. I hope you go and make shepherd's pie cause it's super cozy and it's that cozy time of year and it really just does the trick. All right, see you next time. Thanks for watching.